In this video, we're going to cover PSP emulation in the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. The PSP, the system most people bought just to hack and put some Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advance games on. I know that's why I did it originally, but you know, there are some good games on the PSP. Yeah, some. Quote, unquote, some. Um... Anyways, Sony's handheld system is a great system to emulate on the Xbox Series X and S. It runs very well, and there are a number of options on how to do so. You could do it through RetroArch, you could install a standalone PSP emulator, and it's just fantastic. In this video, we're going to cover the RetroArch version of PPSSPP, so let's dive in. To get started with PSP emulation on the Xbox Series X and X version of RetroArch, you need to install the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. This guide is a continuation of my new how to install RetroArch video tutorial. We are going to be relying on a lot of steps that were covered in this initial video. So go back and watch it if you haven't done so. If you followed another RetroArch setup guide, I still recommend going back and checking out my guide because I go over a bunch of advanced settings that I'm going to be using in this tutorial and I'm not going to be going over those again because I already showed everyone how to do it and having it over and over and over again is a waste of my time. So refer back to this initial install video. The next thing we're going to need are some PSP games. If you have a hacked PSP, you can dump these using the UMD drive on the PSP itself. Or if you have digital versions on your hacked PSP, you can dump those as well. Or, you know, you can always resort to the shady part of the internet. I really don't give a crap which way you do it, but don't ask me for illegal download links because I will not share them. I will not provide them. I will not do that, so don't bother asking, your comment will be deleted, just stop it. Now just a quick note about PSP game format, they can be an ISO format, CSO format, PBP format, you should be good for most PSP game formats here on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. But once you have your PSP game source, we just need to put them into our Xbox's internal SSD or on a USB drive. PSP games work perfectly from USB, so that's how I'm going to choose to store them, just so it saves room on my limited internal storage space. So I'm just going to grab my PSP game folder, open up my USB thumb drive, and drag it in. Now, if you do want to copy your PSP games to your internal Xbox SSD, if you followed my advanced guide, as I mentioned earlier, you will have a development files Xbox file share here that you could click on. And then from here, you go into Windows Apps, open up your RetroArch folder. And I told you to make a games folder in that original tutorial, and you could add your PSP games to the internal SSD just by simply dragging them in. I had already done so earlier for testing purposes, so I'm actually just going to delete these now. I don't need them. I'm going to run from USB, but yeah, you can just drag them in. Both options work great, so choose the method that will work best for your setup needs. But while we're waiting on these PSP games to copy over to my USB thumb drive, the last thing that we are going to need to get PPSSPP set up is a PPSSPP assets folder. This folder does need to be a specific version for the version of PPSSPP that you are using within RetroArch. The most current version is 1.11.3. That is what this tutorial is covering. That is what this folder is for. I have uploaded the correct PPSSPP asset folder onto my Dropbox. A link will be in the description below. In the description, you download files for tutorials from the description of those videos. You can find that stuff in the descriptions of videos. Guess what? You can download this file from the description. So yeah, download the PPSSPP folder that is in the description. Once it's downloaded, you just need to get it extracted. It is in zip format, so you should be able to extract it with virtually anything. But once you got it extracted, make sure that it's just a folder named PPSSPP, and when you open that folder, you have a bunch of files and folders. If for whatever reason you open this up and it's another folder that says PPSSPP, pull that folder out of that folder, because we just need it to be the folder, and this inside of it, nothing else. But once you have this folder ready to go, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So if you follow the advanced setup guide in my install video, we just need to go into the development files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder, our new system folder, and drag it right in. Good to go. We're ready to begin loading up PSP games. Or if you're still relying on My Files Explorer, you could open up your USB thumb drive and drag it right in. 
but take the USB drive out of your computer, put it back into your Xbox, and load into My Files Explorer. And then from here we're going to go into removable storage devices, our USB thumb drive, select the PPSSPP folder, tell it to copy, then go to isolated storage, packages, find your RetroArch folder, it's usually the first one, local state, find your system folder, and then tell it to paste. And once you have your games and PPSSPP folder in your correct directories, we are ready to load up into RetroArch. Once RetroArch has booted up, we need to make a new Direct3D11 config file to use for PSP games. If you've already done this for GameCube or PlayStation 2, we don't need to make another one. You could go ahead and skip over to playing PSP games. But if this is my first tutorial you're watching, you do need to make a new config file for Direct3D11 games to use on PSP, PS2, GameCube, and Wii. To do this, be on the main menu, go down to Configuration File, and save a new configuration. From here, go up to Load Configuration and choose the new config file that it just created for you. So again, I've already done this before. I made a new DirectX 11 config file and I got that all set up in previous videos, but we're going to show you how to do it with a new one here. So select the new config file and it will load up and it breaks the menu when you load new configuration files. So just press A and then press B to fix the main menu. And now from here, we're going to go over to settings and go into drivers. We're going to change the video driver from OpenGL to Direct3D11. Once that's set, press B and go down to video. Now full screen mode and make sure you have start and full screen mode on and make sure full screen width and height are set to zero and then turn on force resolution on UWP. Once you have that option set, go ahead and back out and then back out again. And this time we're going to go down to core and we're going to turn off allow cores to switch the video driver. If you try to use this Direct3D11 config file on GameCube or Wii games without this option being off, it will break the config file. It will change it back to GL and it's just a big pain. So turn this option off. And then from here, go back up to the main menu, configuration file, and save the current configuration. Now from here, we're just gonna go ahead and quit RetroArch real quick, make sure it saves the config file, and then just boot back in. And we're gonna be back on our OpenGL profile now, so you can confirm this by going into the drivers and seeing that yes, we are on OpenGL, that's fine. But to begin loading up PSP games, we're just gonna go down to config file, load configuration, and choose our new RetroArch Direct3D11 configuration file here. And again, it will break the menu, so just press A and then press B to get it fixed. But now we're ready to begin loading up PSP games, and one of the methods of doing this is to go up to load content, navigating to the directory you have your PSP games stored in. So if you have a USB drive, they're going to be in E, and then your PSP game folder. Then you can select one and start playing it. Or if you put them on the internal SSD, they're going to be in S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch folder, Games folder, and then wherever you have your PSP games stored. I don't personally prefer this method, so what I like to do instead is make a games playlist, and to do this, just back out to the main menu, scroll down to import content, and we're going to do a manual scan. Content directory, navigate to the directory of your PSP game stored in, so again, E for USB, S for internal. Choose your PSP games folder and tell it to scan this directory. Now for system name, press right on the D-pad to go down to Sony and find PlayStation Portable. So there's a quite a few little options available here, so find just the PSP proper here. And then for default core, we're going to press right on the D-pad to go down to Sony, and we're gonna find PPSSPP right here. Now make sure scan recursively is set to on if you have your games separated into subfolders, and PSP games can be compressed using CSO, so you can just leave scan inside archives off. But once you have the option set the way you need, go ahead and start the scan. And once it's completed, you'll have a new PlayStation Portable playlist entry here on the left. And now we can begin loading up PSP games. So I'm going to load up Soul Calibur because it lets us see if we have the right asset folder right off the bat. And there we go. If you didn't have the right PlayStation Portable asset folder, this screen would be completely unreadable. So there we are. We have confirmation that our asset folder is good. Awesome. 
But from here, you could just begin loading up and playing your PSP games. So for those of you looking to do so, that's the end of the tutorial for you. Controls are set up like they would be on an actual PSP, so you have your left thumbstick, your D-pad, your face buttons, and then your two shoulder buttons are assigned to the right and left bumper. Now by default, performance in PPSSPP has been fantastic. I've had absolutely no complaints on the PSP games that I actually own. I don't have the most PSP games, so I don't know how everything will run on the Xbox Series X and S, but for the ones that I do have, I've had little to no complaints. Like, it's just been great. Like, Soul Calibur here works perfectly. Star Wars Battlefront works perfectly. Crisis Core has worked perfectly for me, as far as I can tell. Like, I've had absolutely no complaints. But let's go ahead and cover some of the more advanced core options available to us within PPSSPP. To get started, hold down your quick menu shortcut and go into the RetroArch quick menu. Now from here we're going to scroll down to options. And our first option is to choose the internal resolution our PSP games are running at. By default they are running at 480 by 272 and if you want to have the best compatibility and performance you can leave it at this resolution. This will ensure that there's never going to be any upscaling issues or upscale induced lag. But on the Xbox Series X at least, you can turn this all the way up to 3840 by 2176 and not really have any issues. I've been playing all of my games at this 4K resolution and I have not noticed a single bit of lag. Again, I don't have the most PSP games or very demanding PSP games at that, so results on this may vary. You could try setting this up to 4K. If you experience lag, just drop it back down until you don't. But this option does require a restart for it to take effect, so once you have the resolution set the way you want it, we just need to close out of our content, which is going to crash RetroArch. Closing out of anything in Direct3D11 crashes the whole program, so you're just better off force closing RetroArch, and then relaunching it. And then to load up PSP games again, we do need to go into the configuration file, and load up our Direct3D11 config file. And then when you reboot into the game, you are going to be at that new 4K resolution or whatever the resolution is that you decided to go with. And I'm not gonna lie, PSP games look fantastic upscaled. They had some pretty good assets to them. And I just, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of upscaled PSP, it looks so good. But as you can see, there is very little in the way of performance issues here other than my gameplay skill itself. Like, that's just always lacking, so whatever. But going back into the quick menu and options, let's go ahead and continue on. So we're going to skip over the next couple of options here and go to language. If you need to set a language, you could do so here. Next, we have the confirmation button. This is set to cross, which is the A button on your Xbox controller, or you could set it to circle, which would make it B. So if you prefer US or Japanese layout, you could do so here. Next is rendering mode. Leave this on buffered. GPU hardware TNL, leave this on. And then we got anisotropic filtering. Now, normally this is a nice option to give your textures a little bit of a facelift, but on PPSSPP, this actually causes it to crash the emulator back to the dev mode home screen. So leave this one off. Don't turn it on. It will break things. Next, we have spline slash bezier curves quality, and you can crank this up to high without any hits on the games that I've tried at least. We're going to skip over frame skip stuff because the Xbox is powerful enough to run this, so we don't need to worry about it. And this brings us to duplicate frames in 30Hz games. I like to turn this on. It makes the PSP games that run at 30fps look a little bit smoother on my monitor. It's not really making them run faster, but they look better to my eye. So I like to have this option on. Next we have the Vertex Cache, and this is a bit of a speed hack, so you could turn this one on or off if you'd like. I haven't noticed any bugs with it on in my gameplay sessions, so I turn it on. If I ever come across one that it doesn't look good on, I'll most likely turn it off. The next couple of options we're going to skip over again because you want to leave them on. That includes fast memory, block transfer GPU, and software skinning. The next couple of options are all having to do with the speed of PSP emulation. So you could have lazy texture caching, retain change texture positions, or disable slower effects. You can enable all of these if you have lag in certain PSP games. Again, I have not come across any lag in the games that I've tested, so I haven't turned these on. I haven't seen a need to. But next, we have lower resolution for effects. This kind of goes hand in hand with some of these other speed hacks. We don't need to lower the resolution, so I just leave this one off. Next is texture scaling, and the first option is texture scaling level. So this is an option between 1 or 5 or auto. So I personally like to leave this on 1 or auto. 
and it will scale the textures up to my current internal resolution, make them look a little bit cleaner. Then you can choose the scaling type between XBRZ, hybrid by cubic, or hybrid by cubic. I recommend going through all four of these options and seeing which one you prefer. For me personally, I just leave it on XBRZ. And then we could choose our texture filtering method between auto, nearest, linear, or linear FMV. For PSP, I honestly really like the look of linear in 3D games and then nearest on 2D games. So go through them, see which one you prefer. But we're gonna turn it on linear for now. Next up, we have texture deposterize. Turn this one on if you are doing any sort of upscaling. It will help smooth out the picture, make it look a little bit nicer. And next up is texture replacement. I'm not going to be covering this in this video. So I would recommend looking up on PPSSP on how to do texture replacements and HD texture packs. Next, we have IO on thread. Leave this on. IO timing method. This is working just fine under fast, but if you want to be more accurate, you can tell it to simulate UMD delays. That way you have proper load times and things like that, but you should be fine on fast. Leave ignore bad memory access is on. And then the last option is for internal cheat support of PPSSPP emulation. I'm not familiar with PPSSPP cheats. I'm not really familiar with any cheats, honestly, so you can turn this on or off if you know what you're doing, and I'm just going to leave it at that. But that's going to cover it as far as the core options for PPSSPP are concerned. If you have certain options you want to set for one game but not others, you could do so under Manage Core Options and Saving a Game Option File for every game that you want to have a different config for. Alternatively, if you want to set a core-wide option, you can back out of the option screen, go down to Overrides, and save a core override. But that's going to do it as far as PSP emulation is concerned within RetroArch. Again, you could do PSP emulation through RetroArch, or you can install the standalone PPSSPP version that is available on Xbox consoles. I will have a guide up on my channel on how to do that, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, RetroArch is working perfectly for this process. Either option works great, and it's really up to you which one you want to use. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, and please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live on the channel. Really goes a long way to helping us get the channel to grow to a point where it is self-sufficient, and we are super grateful to all of you for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or check out the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really does go a long way to keeping this place up and running and we are super grateful to all of our champions who have done so already. So many of you have signed up over the last little bit and we are just so grateful to all of you friggin' rock stars for that. Thank you so much again from all of us here. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.